I'll be telling you the harsh truth about the Global Talent Endorsement Visa. Now, if this is the first time you're hearing about the Global Talent Endorsement Visa, or you're putting together your application to apply, or you're putting your evidences together and you're just not sure of what to do, well, this video is surely for you because I'll be telling you the harsh realities and truths behind the endorsement visa and what they are looking for. So take your pen and your paper, jot down this point and get ready to apply. Before I continue, I'm literally Imelda and on this channel we talk all things tech, lifestyle, fashion and in-betweens and if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn up the post notification, the bell icon by the side so that you'll be the first to know when I post a new video and without further ado, let's delve into the hash 5 truths about the global talent endorsement that you need to know. The first harsh truth about the Global Talent Endorsement Visa is that Technician is specifically looking out for potential talent who have the potential to literally put more significance or add to the UK sector. Now, Technician is literally only going to pick individuals whose application is tailored to answer the questions such as what would they be coming to do in the UK, how would they add to the UK sector, specifically to any of the categories they apply through the endorsement from, and how whatever they do is so unique that it will grow the UK economy. It's a harsh truth to understand and hear but the truth is that UK is searching for individuals who would add to the economy and if the role you are in or what you're doing doesn't buttress this in the narrative you portray in your application, the harsh truth is that you'll be rejected. So you have to be able to sell yourself and your narrative in such a manner that would literally indicate to Tech Nation that you're not just a global entity to be reckoned with but you have potentials and you have good plans for the future if brought to the UK. I'll also add to the first point by saying you shouldn't always necessarily focus on your past achievement. It's good to highlight your past achievement but you need to throw more light on your future plans as an individual in your career and your future plans on how you would add to the UK economy and the sector or field of endeavor your career lies in. Also, I will add to the first point by saying you need to clearly articulate why you are choosing UK as the destination you choose to become a global endorsement applicant in because there are so many countries who actually host a global talent visa program countries like Australia US and the like but they don't call it global talent visa per se they have another name for it but in synonym they do the same thing so UK will want to understand why of all the other countries who offer something as such as global talent why have you chosen the UK to apply to so you need to buttress on why you've chosen the UK as your destination to apply for the global talent visa as well as how you would add to this sector the country as a whole and how you would improve on yourself as an individual going forward. It's also important that you show deep understanding of the UK sector in any field you're in. So if you're coming through the research route, you need to show deep depth understanding on all the research about UK and the like. If you're coming through tech nation route, you need to show deep depth understanding about the tech industry in the UK. So they need to know that you're not just applying to come and stay in the UK for your own personal gains, but they also need to know that you know a lot about what is happening in whatever category or career path you are in. The second harsh truth about the global talent endorsement is that, for instance, if you're applying through the research route or the tech route or the movie route or art route, you need to be specific. You need to know the endorsing body which acts as an umbrella for each of these routes. Now, if for instance you're applying under the tech category of which tech nation is like the umbrella body that takes care of this route, you need to specifically tailor your application to meet tech nations criteria. Some people beat around the bush and just submit applications that really don't buttress the particular route they're applying to. So if you're applying to tech nation, you need to basically take the time to go and read up what tech nation requires for their applicants. You cannot be using what tech nation requires for the application under Royal Society of Research. And you also cannot take Royal Society of Research criteria for tech nation. You would literally get rejected immediately. So you need to go on the body you are applying through or under 
and read their criteria and try to put together your document and your evidences to meet that body's criteria and not just make your application just a free road for all you need to specifically tailor your application and your evidences to the body you are applying for and its criteria i'll also add to this you also need to define a specific niche or area of expertise you're applying for so for instance if throughout your career life journey you've been a carpenter you've been a developer and you've been a travel guide you need to ask yourself what do i want to tell a technician that i am now because you don't want to just beat around the bush and technician cannot really decipher what you're actually applying as so if you want to apply as a developer even though you've been a real estate agent or some other career path but you need to tailor your application as a developer and make technician know that very clearly stated in whatever means maybe through your personal statement or through other supporting documents but they need to know that this particular person might have been through all these other career paths but specifically for this application they are applying as a developer i don't know if that makes sense but that is really important you need to be specific with the niche you are applying for under the particular endorsing body you're applying through. The third harsh truth about the global talent endorsement is that people underestimate the importance of personal statement. Personal statement is literally one of the most important documents after the reference letter because after your referee sells you, your personal statement is you selling yourself because in the personal statement you have more leeway to tell them a good story about yourself, specifically about your career journey, how you started the career, what and what you've done well in the career what you're doing right now and what you're hoping to do and this is also where you buttress points like what you hope to do in the future if given the endorsement how you plan to move your sector forward whilst in the UK this is where you sell yourself highly this is a piece of evidence that the endorsing body would be using as your narrative to coin all other supporting documents you might have submitted so your personal statement literally acts as a summary of of all your other supporting documents so your personal statement will literally be telling them a story about where you've been where you're coming from where you are and where you're yet to go to so make sure you kill it in your personal statement making sure you clearly and concisely buttress major points that you need them to understand and making sure your story and your narrative adds up through the supporting documents you would also be submitting to add to the third point make sure you don't submit a boring personal statement or a personal statement that is not unique to you. Personal statements cannot be generic because everybody's journey is different. So don't make the mistake of copying another person's personal statement and thinking it will fly. It won't fly because you don't have the same life or career life as that person. Even though you're in the same role, your career journey must have been different or your life history or why, how you delved into that career in the first place would always be different. So you cannot copy a generic personal statement. You need to create it from your own story. So personal statements are very unique make sure you do not create a generic boring uninspiring one the fourth harsh truth about the global talent endorsement is that they are searching for individuals who have a broader reach so for instance they're searching for individuals who do not only perform or have performed well in their careers but have also helped the larger community through teaching coaching leadership events to ensure that other people outside their work environment have been impacted by either their leadership skills or their knowledge so they want to ensure that they're giving this endorsement to individuals who are not selfish or self-centered don't know that you give out to your community at large as well don't know that they're giving this endorsement to an individual who would help other people in the nearest future not just themselves not just for their personal gains this is a very very nice and great aspect of the endorsement lookout because everybody can be selfish but it's good to know that they're also searching for individuals who want to help others so when you're applying make sure you buttress and state events wherein you coached people you taught people you were a leader at some level to a group of people outside your day-to-day -day work activities this will really help you in your application and to make the global talent endorsement bodies know that you are not just a great worker at your field but you are one who is willing to deploy your knowledge and expertise to help 
others who might not be in your field or nor have no knowledge of what you do to get to that point the last but not the least harsh truth about the global talent endorsement is that most people prepare inadequately most people don't do their research in fact i have come in contact with a lot of people who just want it fast they perceive or they feel that if you have gotten your endorsement they can just write to you email you to tell them what to do but it doesn't work like that that's why i do not offer one-to-one -one services because i feel everybody's journey is unique whatever information i am sharing are one that cut across all the categories and one that i learned myself on my own journey before i got the endorsement you can't jump through stages i'm sorry to say like i said in one of the points i mentioned everybody's career path is different everybody's story is different so there are some things you cannot just copy there are some things you cannot take word for word from someone else because their story their journey is different from yours so you need to do your research you need to seriously sit down and understand what is required of you and then get advice and listen to others who have gone before you and ask yourself how can i tailor this to meet my own needs requirements and my own background you can't just take whatever you hear word for word for it you have to sit down and tailor it to your own story and make it work for your own role my advice would be that you need serious preparation and diligent research to be able to meet the endorsing body's criteria with your application and your evidences so that you don't get rejected and even though you do you can have a good ground to appeal your point properly and get heard because you truly did your research and you understood what was required so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have don't forget to put the thumbs up and turn up post notifications if you want to get to know about new videos like this and if you haven't subscribed what are you still waiting for click the subscribe button and join the family until then i am literally emailed thanks for watching bye